I'm really wanting to have a conversation with you. I'm not wanting to talk at you. I'm not wanting to do a presentation so much as I guess I'm wanting to kind of be your friend at the factory, I suppose, in just talking to you about some of the people that you encounter in your lives and give you some insight and understanding as to who these people are, what impact they can have in your life, and what you can do about it. Now, we've talked about narcissism and the different types of narcissists, and I want to move on now to borderline personality disorder. Now, borderline personality, I don't know that it's really all that descriptive, and you guys know I'm not really big about labels, but I'm going to defend labeling for a little while here to tell you this. Labels are used a lot for insurance purposes. You've heard me say that. But it's also important in communicating to a therapist, for example, as to what they're treating. That really gets important here in borderline personality, and I'll tell you why in just a little while. Labels are a shorthand that therapists can use to communicate with one another or to a hospital or to a caregiver down the road somewhere, if they can use that shorthand to describe to a future caregiver or a new caregiver what this person's history has included, what their symptom cluster is by giving them this descriptor. And here's what borderline personality disorder describes. A pervasive pattern of instability of interpersonal relationships, self-image and affects, and marked impulsivity, beginning at least by early adulthood, and present in a variety of contexts. Now, let's break that down a minute, because that's a pretty busy sentence, and I really want you to understand and make sense of these because they play a part of your role. A pervasive pattern of instability. This isn't as somebody that has a bad day or they have a bad week or things have gone poorly at work or whatever. This is a pervasive pattern. That means it's going to be there with this person week in and week out, month in and month out. It pervades their life. If you were going to describe them across time, you would say, There is a pattern of instability. They're unstable. And where? Well, in interpersonal relationships, they're just not stable in those. We're going to talk about what that means, but think about it in just common sense terms. Instability in interpersonal relationships. What's that mean? Well, they run hot. They run cold. They're happy, then they're sad, then they're mad, then they're glad. They just up and down, up and down, emotional roller coaster in their interpersonal relationships. And this isn't just intimate relationships, romantic relationships. It can be everything. It can be with their brother or their sister, their mother or their father, their lovers, their coworkers, anyone that they have a relationship with. It can be marked by instability, up and down, up and down. Instability in their self-image. These people oftentimes don't know who they are. They'll question, I I don't really know who I am anymore. You'll hear them say things like that. You'll hear them put their head in their hands and say, I don't even know who I am anymore. I, I I just don't know. One day they'll be up and they'll be thumping their chest and full of vim and vigor and confidence. And the next day they're like wondering why they're even in this world. And then affect, that means emotions and the way it expresses itself. There's instability in their emotions. Within one hour, they can be laughing and crying and raging. Instability of emotion. Then marked impulsivity. These people don't think things through. They're very impulsive. They take high-risk behaviors. They act on impulse. They don't think it through. They just pull the trigger. They just go. They have an idea, and boom, they're on it. Now, this starts by early adulthood. That means you'll see this early in their life. You may see it when they're teenagers. You might even see it real early on. And when we say it's present in a variety of contexts, 
That means it's not situation specific. It's not just that they do this in reaction to their parents, or they do it only at school, or they do it only when they're around their brother. That means it happens in a variety of contexts. It cuts across environments. You'll see this in their work relationships. You'll see it at church. You'll see it at their family reunions. You'll see it in their own family with their husband or their wife. So that's what we've got. Let's think about it again. Instability and impulsivity. That's the core of the borderline personality disorder. Instability, up and down, up and down, and impulsivity. And it can be intrapersonal, meaning it's all about them, or it can be interpersonal, it's between them and someone else. And we're going to get into more detail, but that's what we're talking about. So if you've got people in your life that are just really volatile, they're just really up and down, then we're headed in this direction. Now, do they fit the diagnosis? Maybe, maybe not, but that's not important. It's important that you understand that there are people that have these symptoms, these traits, these characteristics. And if they cluster together and they are pervasive, meaning they're around a lot, then this is what you might be dealing with. And we're going to talk about strategies for handling that. Now, how often does this occur? Well, these kinds of things are often way underdiagnosed because these people don't often present for treatment. It's not like a broken leg where you can't walk on it, so you got to go get help. But estimates are that there are at least 18 million people in the world that have this pattern of behaviors. 18 million people. That's quite a lot. Now, I don't consider myself to be a vertically developed expert in borderline personality. And what I mean by vertically developed is there are some people within a profession like psychology who devote their entire career to one disorder or one group of people. And so that's all they do. They do research about that. They develop treatments about that. They work only with that population. That's what we mean by vertically developed. It doesn't mean they don't know other things, but thank God we have people that devote so much of their time, effort, energy, and career to a particular group of people or particular diagnosis. And Dr. Linehan is a real expert when it comes to borderline personality. And she makes this observation. She says borderline personality disorder is by far the most stigmatized disorder of all. In fact, she says if you wind up in the emergency room for any reason, do not tell them that you have been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder because they're going to go, oh, okay, we don't want to deal with this person. They're going to be more trouble than they're worth, so let's just not deal with them. Big stigma associated with borderline personality disorder. Let me tell you why I want to say that. Think about what we've just described. These people have a high degree of instability, a high degree of impulsivity, problems with their self-image, and they're emotionally very volatile. What do you think it must be like for those people? Now, I know what they're like to live with. <laughs> they can be a real pain. But think about what it must be like for them. This is not fun for these people. They don't do this because it's cool. They don't do it to entertain themselves. So I'm saying that if you have someone in your life like this, try to have some compassion. Try to approach these people with a degree of understanding because this is not fun for them. They don't like this. Now, a lot of personality disorders they tend to think, hey, this is working for me, so I, you know, why would I fix what ain't broke? They don't see the downside to it. However, a lot of personality disorders create a lot of pain for the person, and I think borderline personality is one of those disorders. I think these people experience a lot of pain, a lot of anguish, a lot of real discomfort in their lives. And as I get into the nine 
traits, characteristics, or symptoms of the borderline personality, you're going to understand what I mean about that. If you look at most of the people that write about this, and I'm not just talking about the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of the American Psychiatric Association, but most people that work with borderline personalities, most people that have experience with them, they'll tell you if they were just going to describe them, not in big words, but just, you know, here's my experience of them. They would tell you that there's instability in their relationships, that they can't get a good relationship to stick, that they're real volatile in their moods, they have problems modulating their behavior, they have issues with their identity or their sense of self, and they have a profound fear of abandonment. They just have a chronic fear of being left. And they have a huge reaction. They're hyper-reactive to almost anything that triggers one of these areas. 